Um, really, what I'm going to talk about is rest. Rest. Not just phys- and it's not really a physical rest that I'm going to referring to uh, today um, that, that you need. In our culture, we're so obsessed, like I said, with looking ahead and what's coming up next and what we're doing and we're, we're we really flex how hard work how like hard working we are uh, but really at the end of the day what's it all for like what what are you chase what are you chasing after is it really providing um is it well is it really doing it for you Every year we come up with goals and resolutions uh, and, and workout routines and finding a, a new relationship uh, and, and maybe maybe starting a, a business and thinking that that then when we reach that destination, we will be content with our lives and we will be able to rest. Just until I get there, I'm going to keep my head above water. And once I reach that destination, I can rest, like I can take this big breath. Like if I get there, if I get the amount of followers or the recognition for what I do, or if I become number one in my field, I can rest. I remember, and God really opened my eyes to this. Um, cause I remember when I was in high school, all my friends were getting licenses. And even when I was in middle school, I always remember dreaming about getting a car and being able to drive it anywhere I wanted to. And, uh, when I, when I reached that, then that would be the pinnacle uh, of you know adulthood and freedom and independence and then I got my license and I enjo- I was I was tripping out the first day that I got the keys to that car and I drove without having to have my mom in the front seat um, I could go wherever I wanted and it was it was amazing like it there was this freedom and and you really it, it was probably a few days and then I'm like yeah, I kind of got used to it and I kind of like really neglected the blessing that it was uh, you know r- recognizing what I had. And it was just on to the next thing. And then uh, I remember, I remember even, you know, I recently just got engaged and I think I, I just had romanticized it. And, you know, I love my fiance uh, so stinking much, but I think I played it up so much in my head. And I think I attributed marriage to a certain status in my life that I would just, when I got there, I would just have all my problems figured out or my spouse would just figure out all my problems. And then when I got there, it's like, well, I still struggle with these certain things and then these insecurities that I have. And it's just not all, it hasn't just all disappeared all of a sudden. Like, what's up with that? Uh, and you realize, and it's kind of scary because as those first get out of the way and as you as you reach some of these accolades, it just doesn't produce the rest that you were looking for. And so really in your in your mind, you think you're going from point A to point B when and you're you're making ground, but really you're just chasing your tail. It really reminds me if you read the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, it's really you just the, the uh, it's really a depressing book if you really want to be in your fields. You read the book and, and it's King Solomon talking about the wisdom and everything that he has and his accomplishments and the richest man on earth. And and uh and at the end of the day, he's like it's meaningless because you know the what what's it to gain everything and then die and the work of your hands cannot continue past the grave at the end of the day it gets inherited to fools uh it's meaningless you came into the world naked in the, the same way you're going to leave it's meaningless meaningless he just continues to say but yet we are sold for the lie uh that we need to chase money uh flex flex chains um bigger houses bigger boats bigger cars whatever it like what, and then when we gain it then then we will have made it we will have made it and then we can rest but i'm telling you friends you will you'll you'll get there and you will be horribly disappointed i actually have a friend uh who is a division 1 basketball player five star recruit legit dude uh and is at the top of the top of his profession and you know what he you know the reason why he came to christ is when he got there he realized it's not what it's all cracked up to be that there there wasn't that rest for his soul uh, everything that he had, all the eggs he put in that basket, it did not meet uh, the idea he had in his head. It did, it did not sustain uh, those desires he had in his soul. And then he found Jesus, and it changed everything. It was, it, it's just, it's just different. And 
And just like they say, I remember all the time before I met my fiance, they always will say, like, when I would ask, how do you know when you found your wife? And everybody just says, when you know, you know. And the same thing, when you find the author of life, it's when you know, you know. And when you've experienced this, you know. There's a difference. And it's not like anything that this world can offer you. It's nothing like this this world can offer you. And I think this re- this relationship that we have with our work really enters into our spiritual rela- relationship we have with whatever God you're chasing. It's, it's all on the basis of what you do, not who you are. So who are we? What's the difference between me and Fido? <laughs> me and my dog? What's, what is the difference? Some of you will say, well, it's our ability to reason. It's our ability to have this consciousness that I recognize that I am alive and I recognize my surroundings. Well, if we look at Genesis and we look at the serpent who had deceived man into eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and as a byproduct of that, brought sin and death into the world and created the fall of man, uh, well, we see how the serpent, the beast of the field, operated in deceiving man. Uh, And the only way it could do that is by its cunning. It's by its reasoning. So if if the beast did that, and obviously that was not created in the image of God, what makes us different than the, the animals? Well, we are human. We're created in the image of God. And what it means to be created in the image of God is we know how to harness, one, our creative power and practice self-restraint over our desires. Now that's to say if we are actually operating as children of God, not like some of us, how we sometimes act like the devil. Um, but I, I find that really interesting. We are we we know how to harness our creative power and we practice self-restraint over our res- desires. Sin stems from an insecurity uh, of our identity, which is found in him who is enough. Did you know actually the word El Shaddai uh, in Hebrew means Uh, uh, I am he who said to the world, enough. He who said enough to his world, when he was forming the earth, he stopped the process at a certain point withholding creation from reaching its full completion, and thus the name embodies God's power to stop creation. The misconception is people believe that God created the world perfect. He didn't create it perfect. He created it good. And on the seventh day, he rested, even though he could have created every, like, he could have just kept going and going and going and never been satisfied and then just had this anxiety of never it being good enough. But he looked at the world and said it was good and it's enough. He stopped and he rested. And I think that's what some of you need to take after. You need to take after who you were created in the image of and looking at your, looking at your life and being content and resting and trusting that he is enough and stop looking to these things that could never satisfy or quench that thirst you have in your in your soul. Now that's not to say that sit on your butt and never do anything uh, because that's a sin. Being slothful is a sin. That's not what I'm saying. So hear my heart. The interesting thing is actually in Jewish culture and how the Bible was written is that every time God created, it would end with there was evening and there was morning in the first day. There was evening and there was morning the second day. There was evening and there was morning the third day. Why does it say that? That doesn't really make sense. It should be there was morning and there was night or there was morning and there was evening. Well, actually, uh, because how God created and designed the world is that the day starts when we lay our head on our pillow. The Sabbath starts when we lay our head on our pillow. It begins with rest, begins with rest. Not when you when you start with your cup of coffee in the morning and you think about all the things you need to get accomplished for the day. That's not how uh, your day starts, but, but you resting on the pillow, trusting in God uh, who told the world enough. That, some of you need to ponder that for a little bit. That is amazing. Uh, and, and really... Uh, you know, Sabbath uh, really is a day to keep a sign between him, uh, God, God and Israel that you may know that he is Lord by observing the Sabbath. Israel would give a testimony that he was their God and they were his people who all, would always acknowledge the day on which he rested after creating, after finishing creation on the seventh day. Now, Sabbath is not a commandment we're bound to. It's not like another law and how you're thinking, well, I just got to do this. I just got to, 
like that's that's kind of switched the mindset, and this is the purpose of today. It's a promise we're invited to enjoy. Sabbath rest is an invitation to practice for eternity in God's presence. It is an act of regular and intentional. Now listen to this. It is an act of regular and intentional trust of God's rule on earth. When we stop working, we can truly rest in God's presence. Wow. When we stop working, we can truly rest in God's presence. Some of you forgot what silence sounds like. You got to fill the void with music. You got to fill the void with, you know, accompanied by another person and you you don't know what it's like to be in the presence of God and 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 as you draw close to him you look at your life and realize like what what is it all for have you like do, do you know what it's like to rest or do you have to and I'm not just saying physical rest because those of you you know what I'm talking about those of you you fill your time with work because you're insecure with your life and you're not content and so busying yourself with work actually eases your conscience and distracts you from the question of why why or dealing with things you know things that you know you're you're struggling with in your heart you know, there's got to be more, but you fill it with work. And we're, we're rapidly approaching a destination in the future where this breath will leave our lungs some sooner than later, but yet you busy yourself now, so then you'll worry about it later. Trust me, this is coming from a chief procrastinator, someone who said, oh, I'll do that later. I'll, let me Let me worry about that later. That's don't live your life like that because any at the end of the day anyway what does it all matter what's the purpose of this life is it really just to work get a job become uh get married have kids retire become worm food is that really all there is to life and then in a few generations down the road you'll just be forgotten you were created You were created in the image of God to be in relationship with him. And only then, when when you come in contact with that God and you draw near to the one, that is only when you will find rest. Jesus says in John 14, 6, that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. There's a lot of you that struggle with depression and anxiety uh, where there's like this overwhelming weight where, where you're thinking about all these things you have to do or you haven't got done and you're insecure and this anxiety is almost like overwhelming where it feels like you're drowning. I want to tell you that the truth, that there's truth that you can stand on, that it's solid ground and his name is Jesus. There is absolute truth. And in his name is Jesus. He is the way, he's the truth, and he is the life. He is the life. And in him, you will find rest. See, Sabbath um, used to be that it was a day that it was just confined to a day. But Jesus, uh, the good news of the cross is that Jesus brought us into rest and made us a new creation by what he did on the cross. We are at peace with God by our belief in him, the guilt before and the relief knowing there is rec- uh, reconciliation that we we do we we do not earn God's favor by what we do by uh, but rather who we are or whose we are matter and, and it's our belief in Jesus and the one that on the cross he said it is finished and now we can rest knowing we are at peace uh, with God. The various elements of the uh, Sabbath symbolize the coming of the Messiah who would provide a permanent rest for his people. Once again, the example of resting from our labors come into play. With the establishment of the Old Testament law, the Jews were constantly laboring to make themselves acceptable to God. Their labors included trying to obey a myriad of do's and don'ts of the ceremonial law, the temple law, the civil law, etc. Of course, they couldn't possibly keep all those laws, so God provided an array of sin offerings and sacrifices so they could come to him for forgiveness and restore fellowship with him, but only temporarily. 
temporarily. Just as they began their phase, their physical labors after one day of rest, so too did they have to continue to offer sacrifices. But these sacrifices were offered in anticipation of the ultimate sacrifice of Christ on the cross, who after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down, sat down at the right hand of God, just as he rested after performing the ultimate sacrifice, he sat down and rested, ceased from his labor of atonement because there was nothing more to be done ever. Because of what he did, we no longer labor in law, keeping in order to be justified in sight of God. Jesus was sent so that we might rest in God and what he has provided. It's time to stop acting like a slave and start accepting that you are a son. Because the only way that you can earn this, you you can't earn this. You cannot earn this right standing with God, this relationship with God, this peace with God. It only comes through belief in him. Those who try, those who try to find their life will lose it, but those who lose it for his sake will find it. You try to, let's, let's see how it works out for you. You go and try to find your purpose in your career. You go and try to find your purpose in your kids. You and go and, and try to find your purpose in your hobby or your skill set. And let's see how far you get down the road until you realize that it's not enough. It's time to put your faith in him who said enough. And when you find him, you will understand, one, the purpose of this life. You will understand your identity and you will able to be able to truly love yourself. The, the world will tell you to do what makes you happy. The world will tell you that you just need to self-medicate and self-love and learn to love yourself. But the, uh, the, the, the stupid thing about that is that you are not the answer. The answer is found in Jesus Christ, the epitome of love. The, the 66 book letter all pointing to him, the greatest love story ever told. The one who knew no sin became sin and took a burden and a payment that he did not need to pay but was yours and he took it up so you could walk free. It's time to to trade in the grave clothes for your crown. You are a son or daughter of the Most High King. Stop busying yourself and your conscience with your work. You are not what you do. The Spirit of God, you can, those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. It's time to stop chasing your tail and look to the one who has paid it all, that sits at the right hand of the Father. And when you call on his name, he considers you a son. You are a, you are a child of God. Now, this is all, all to say that it's not bad to improve or want to be better, but where is your foundation? Does it start from understanding that even, even if, I, if I don't succeed in my career or these things that I'm pursuing, it has no effect on who I am and my identity? Imagine that type of freedom. And you can experience it today, and it's only found at the foot of the cross. Choose Jesus. Start your year off with a burden that is light and a yoke that is easy. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest. Rest, amen, for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I, I pray right now, Father, that the Spirit of God would be made known to everybody that's watching on the other side of the screen, that right now, under the sound of my voice, I just see it happening right now, that the burden and oppression and the things that they wear, God, I pray that it would be released in the name of Jesus, whether it's it's the stress from work or the stress and pressure of trying to be a father or the single mothers that, that, that wear this enormous pressure. God, I pray for anxiety to leave in the name of Jesus, the depression to leave in the 
name of Jesus, God, so that you would get the glory and you would get the honor, that they would know that the freedom that they experience right now, that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, that the, the freedom that they experience right now, is it can be attributed to you. So Jesus, I pray all those who call on you right now, and those of you that want this in your life, call on the name of the Lord, call on Jesus, wherever you are at right now, and you will find rest. James 4, 8 says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Jesus is not playing hide and go seek, but it's on you to come to him. He is your answer. He is your life and he is your rest. It's time to stop trying and it's time to start surrendering. That is where you will find rest and your true purpose to this life. I pray right now, if you made that decision right, right now, Right, right now, that that there would that all that depression and all that ick would leave, that the anxiety would leave right now in the name of Jesus, Amen, Amen. Uh, this is this is the best decision that you would ever make. Following Jesus is not this dead religion of rules and behaviors that no one can ever live up to. It's freedom. It's freedom. I pray that this message blessed you this morning. And if God did something in your life, I want you to type in the comments or I want you to reach out to me. Uh, you can email me at Be- uh, Pastor Alex at Bethelsrock.org. I would love to hear the testimony of what God did in your life. Uh, or if you want to uh, start discipleship or you're wanting to, to know what do I do next, I would love for you uh, to reach out to me or just leave a comment and we'll start this journey together because I believe that it is meant to be a community and people that will pour into you and speak life into you in your walk. Uh, but I love you guys. I, I pray that this message really impacted your hearts. Um, and just start the year off right and understanding that you can start from rest because your identity is not what you do, but who you are. And you were created in the image of God. God bless you.